Welcome back, Dave. It's so good Thank to you. see you. Good to see you ladies, too. Thank you. You know, Dave was our first ever podcast guest. Our very first podcast guest, yes. Mm-hmm. And because April is Autism Awareness Month, uh, we wanted to have Dave back and uh, just talk to him a little bit about what's been going on in his life and what's been going on in DJ's life and get a little update. Um, but Dave is with us through the whole show. So, you know, we go on just go through everything with Dave. So how was your week, Dave? <laughs> My week, it was um, pretty typical, you know. Since this whole COVID situation, I work from home. Mm. So oh, good, good for you. Long, long hours just in the house now. Oh. So that, that's basically what my week's been. Ho- hopefully okay. the weekend to bring something. Oh, I hope so too. I'm yeah. glad that you said that the the that working from home brings long hours because people mm-hmm. out there have this notion that because you work from home, it's so easy. And they don't realize like when you work from home, you're really working more than you work in the office. Yeah, I work a lot more um, now that I'm home. Number one, there's no commute. Mm-hmm. So when I get up, I just start working. So I don't have to start working until about eight, but I might be on the six. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-mm, Dave. <laughs> they don't. They, I, I well, love work. <laughs> the past shows, I, you know, I don't believe in giving these companies more than... <laughs> then, then but are you is it the nature of the work are you finishing do you find yourself finishing more um why do you put in more time because you're not commuting um all right so working from home does have its benefits since i don't actually have to talk to people i might work a, a little i might i might have to work a little early mm-hmm. i might take a longer break okay you know what i'm saying just kind of break the day up that way Right. And, okay. you know, management is pretty easy going as long as you do what you're supposed to do. They don't really sweat you too much about any type of time you have to be away. So it actually helps me out. Like, I don't have to take off like half day, the whole day. Right. Just because I'm able to work a little earlier, maybe a little later. Right. And I can still like, leave out. So. Yeah. So the flexibility right. works. That's good. Okay. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. You hear that out there, companies? That means let people stay. <laughs> yes, that's what I yeah, say. I, I absolutely do not want to go back. They uh, they gave us a a choice. We could either come back full time once the building opened back up, or want an abbreviated schedule. Mm-hmm. Or if you want, if you're not essential, you can stay home. So you already know what I opted for. <laughs> right. Exactly. Me too. Yeah. That's right. They gave me no option. They yeah. said come back to the office, but I'm still home. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Don't go back. Protest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, babe, how was your week? Well, I mean, right in line with what's going on with Dave, you know, I've been working from home mostly and I'm always more productive from home. That's why I was asking, you know, why do you put in longer hours? But, um, you know, my office is on the garden level of my home. So once I'm in the office, I'm focused on, you know, what I have to do for that day. But this week... <laughs> This week, I had to go to a training every day. Mm. And I was like, did I used to do this before? Like, this is crazy. This get up, get dressed, you know, pack a lunch, you know, get in your car, traffic. This is bull spit. I was like, yeah, no. Um, Yeah, I think I'm so over it. I'm, I'm so over it. And it's only one week. And I just keep thinking like, it's one week, it's one week. And they reimburse us for mileage and stuff like that because it's a training. And I was like, mm-hmm, yeah, I want every bit of my miles. And yeah, Can I get a receipt, please? Thank you. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Need all so, of that back. Um, yeah, I, want, I need all of that back. And I'm good with that. I'm good with the whole commuting life and all of that, you know, 
those days are gone, even though I do believe it's going to be um, a fight, you know, because people who own those buildings are losing money or and or companies still have to pay the rents in those buildings. So I can see them wanting bodies back in the building. Uh, we'll just have to see what the future holds. But my future is in my office in the garden level of my home. Yeah, people are still getting their rent money. I don't know why. It's like you're still getting your money. I mean, I the people that want you to come back to work, let's be honest, are the people who don't have lives at home. And and that's just what it is. It's the people that want to talk to you. Micromanaging all that. Micromanaging you. Mm-hmm. They want to know how. They nosy. They want to know what you've been doing when you haven't been there and all that kind of shit. That's what that is. <laughs> For sure. So how was your week, Maya? My week was less busy. Okay. And for that, I am grateful. My week was spent. It was good. I, I did a little couple things this weekend. I went to a real estate class. Um, that was very interesting. I um, learned a lot of things in there that I did not. It wasn't necessarily that I didn't know, but I guess when people present you um, different things, different ways, then you can just get you know more out of it. It was a free class and it was really good to do. Um, gave me a lot of things to think about as far as uh, buying a home in Virginia. I didn't do that much work. So for that, I am grateful. Can I ask the real estate class? So was that just a state class from Virginia or was that like overall just basically, you know, strategies or different um, knowledge points where you can figure out how you want to go about buying a house? It was both. So okay. I guess you could have utilized it for both. When I got in, I, I thought that it was just going to be like a state class that you took. But then when I got in there and I learned some different things, as far as I'm concerned, like what I would qualify for, or what I would not qualify for. So that was very interesting to know because what I thought they was, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, I, they was like, nah, you that ain't that ain't for you. Us, you, you so um, that's my lane. We we can talk about that later, though. Yeah. So you, that was yeah. that was that was interesting. Um, it was interesting to find out, and then it was strategies. It was people in there that were investors, and people in there that were like home time, first time mm-hmm. home buyers. It was a little bit of, of a mixture there. Uh, most people there were like home time, first time home buyers. And they brought a lot of different people in. It was, it you know, they brought people in there to talk about inspections and title companies and realtors mm-hmm. and you know, all the, they took you through all the rigmarole. But it was a, it was really good to um, get in there and um, hear what the people had to say. So that's yeah. what I spent my week doing. Yeah, that was that was pretty much what I did for the week. Well, I'm glad. I'm really glad that to hear that you enjoyed the class because you weren't at the family prayer breakfast because the class was the same time, but. <laughs> Um, I'm you were. Know, it's never really an event without you, Maya. Thanks for saying that. I, I mean, I know that to be true, but <laughs> you know, I, it just feels good to hear it. Thanks. Yes. Thanks for saying yes. that. I missed y'all too. Thank you. But we had a. It was a nice time. It was a nice time. We had um, every year. I host a family prayer breakfast, and okay. um, this year we had a virtual option because of COVID. And some people live quite a distance. And uh, Maya usually comes home for it. And um, it was nice. We had a we had a really nice time. Um, I would have to tweak some things with the virtual participation, you know, because I don't like it to interrupt the flow. The fellowship is afterwards, you know, but it was really good. And we did miss you, Maya. We pray for you. Thank you. I need, I need all the prayers I can I can get. Um, so let's get into it. Who did some shit this week? Well, I don't have all the details Mm -hmm. and the reason that I don't have all the details, but I really want to bring this up is because I really believe that this is news. So it was published in a few places and it was actually on the news that there were over 30 students from Camden who was sent to the emergency department because there was sanitizer in their milk containers. Mm. So, and I, so, you know how when you go to school, you get your breakfast or you like, it was breakfast. Mm-hmm. It was breakfast. And um, 
So, you know, you open a little milk container, you know, you drink your milk as part of your breakfast or pour it in your cereal. So some the students were young. They were like um, like kindergarten or first grade. The inside of the milk container is white, so it doesn't really look like it's clear liquid or something. So some children were like, you know, this milk tastes nasty. Some children, you know, actually drank the milk or, you know, put it in cereal or whatever. They ingested the milk. And then the company where they get the milk from was saying that, oh, well, it's sanitizer is what we use to clean the machines, you know, like to clean all the bacteria out of the machines and things like that. And they said it, it shouldn't be a problem. It's food grade. What does that mean? <laughs> what does food grade mean for cleaning products? Well, so food grade means that it's um, not that you should ingest it. But it's not toxic if ingested, I guess, is what they're saying. Because, like, people who have butcher block countertops, they use, like, a food gray wood cleaner to um, clean the countertop so that if they're ever preparing food on their countertop and things like that, it's not toxic like the mineral oils and stuff like that that we usually use. Um, but that being neither here nor there. One, I want to know why this isn't news. Mm -hmm. Well, we know it's because it's our babies. Mm -hmm. And two, were these was this milk only sent to Camden? How? Yes. Yeah, so, so let me ask you. They so so the kids. How did they find out that this happened? Like, so I I think, I, well, I'm assuming I do not know all the details. Like I said, it's not highly publicized. But um, somebody smelled bleach, and I'm assuming it was a teacher, or teacher school, right? Something like that. And that's what I'm saying in my head is. You know, I don't know any chlorine that's food grade. I don't know any. I mean, I'm not a chemist. I'm good you at science. Nice. I got an A plus in chemistry class. You I'm on the audience. <laughs> you, gotta be, you don't have to be a chemist to know that, first of all, children digesting anything that's not food or, or anybody digesting anything that's not food is a no. I don't care how much food grade it is. And you're talking about butcher block cleaners. This is not a butcher block situation. This was supposed to be milk. And so th nobody in the company caught that it was a problem with the milk being shipped out and thank goodness only 30 kids and 30 kids is too many three kids right. is too many any right. kids is too many right. but mm -hmm. they didn't notice that this happened so had these kids not digested this and had it just been stored or anything like that and and maybe never opened up for whatever reason then they would have never known that they shipped out cleaning supplies in right. And, and that's school. where and that's where my confusion is, because so 30 children and, and, you know, one is too many. But are are we the only ones that receive that milk? Are we the only no. ones that use that company? You, you know it just doesn't make sense how this has only happened one place. And if it did happen more than one place, no one is talking about it. And that's because the milk was shipped to inner city schools. And if it was in another mm -hmm. school district like Cherry Hill or, you know, any other school district that was not Camden and not saying that it didn't get shipped anywhere else, but it wasn't something that was prompted to be as important because it happened in Camden and not to other children. Because had it not happened to our babies, then it would have been on CNN and everywhere else. You're talking right. about children digesting sanitizer. Right. And yeah. then the principal, because it was breakfast, and the principal called the district to let them know what happened. And because uh, other schools had experienced it, but not before she called the district. And like, you couldn't tell the other schools, like, don't tell the kids not to drink the milk. I, I don't know. I don't have all the facts. I just know like there was an article. It was on the news um, the other day, I guess, when it was happening, because like the poison control, the police department, the fire department, they were all going to um, the school to, you know, check on the kids and make sure everybody was OK. The, um, you know, they sent them to both. There's two hospitals in the city. And one of the hospitals, um, Virtua at Our Lady Lords, does not have peds you know, in the ER. So they can't, they couldn't accommodate a lot of children. Um, so, you know, all the children were treated and released. They are all fine. I just today. don't. Today. That's true. I mean, I know you're working from home, Dave, but what if you got a call? <laughs> Somebody called you. 
Well, my son's school's around the corner, so I'm <laughs> I'm right over there. <laughs> That's I crazy. Mean, That's what I'm saying. It, it had to be more than 30, 30 cartons. It has to be. Like, it it's be. just yes. about the luck of the draw. We pulled those 30, and these are the only 30 that Thank was impacted. That, Thank you. That no. either, either, either they knew their mistake, maybe they thought mm-hmm. they caught them all, you know, but they knew something happened. And yeah. anybody else has to recall everything. You have to. You have to buy on yeah, the side. Every, everything state. should have been recalled. Because recall that whole batch, however, however they exactly. mass produced that, everything that was exactly. mass produced in that 30, exactly. pro- 30 car in, in that yes. production line, That's all of right. them had to have been sanitized, for lack right. of a better word. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's wrong. I, I, I agree. And they're trying I, to sweep it under the rug to, to avoid the negative I, press. That's how I feel. And that Mm -hmm. is the problem. That's the whole problem with the situation. But then, too, I mean, you know, this world doesn't care. It's unfortunate. You know, they don't care about children as much as you would think that they do. You have school shootings all the time. And you see how that's like here today and going tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I guess kids and just the sanitizer is like nothing, you know. Yeah. It's, it's very unfortunate. And I hope that as parents, that the parents don't let this go. You know, it's not going, it, it unfortunately, you know, it's like, who do you blame? But the company, because it's not on the school district, they didn't know that this was going right. on. But I hope mm-hmm. that the parents get some kind of resolution because right. I feel like with this situation, it's like lead poisoning. When you get lead poisoning, you don't know today that you got lead poisoning. It comes, it shows up after the fact. Right. And so mm-hmm. for things like this, it could show up after the fact. And if I was a parent, I wouldn't mm-hmm. I wouldn't let this go at all. No. Right. I mean, how, how can we say a chemical is isn't... <laughs> How, how can we say a chemical isn't a potential carcinogen? Exactly. We can't say that. Exactly. Exactly. So smoking cigarettes, you have a higher risk of getting cancer. lung cancer, but mm-hmm. ingesting a chemical, you don't. Right. That's a problem. Right. Yes, I, hope, I hope 30 attorneys were called. Uh, Me too. Yes. Me yes. too. Yes. That's, that's, that, there you go right there. You hit the head mm-hmm. nail on the head. That's what <laughs> I want. <hope. laughs> yes. Absolutely. So what else do we have, Maya? Child. Now, you know, at the time that this podcast is going to come out, this is going to be old news. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we live in a microwave society. Things are here today and going tomorrow. But I just had to talk to you about what went on at the Oscars between Will Smith and Chris Rock. Um, so as we all know, and if you don't know, then I, I mean, I don't want to like say you was living under a rock, but you might be living under a rock if you don't know by now that Will Smith got his black ass up in the middle of the Oscars while Chris Rock was presenting um, an award for best documentary. And he made a joke about uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. To me, it was a it wasn't any malice behind the joke. It was just what it was, a little joke. It wasn't even like a ha ha. It was really like a ha at best joke mm-hmm. about her <laughs> appearing in G.I. Jane 2. And Will Smith, who chuckled at the joke, got up and he slapped Chris Rock across the face during the live show. And then he, it did, wait, then he sat back down and then he screamed out like a banshee, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. And I have to say the words because that's what he said. That's, that's what he, he said. said. And mm-hmm. then he didn't say it once, he said it twice. Um, all in all, I think that Will Smith was a clown for what he did. And I think his wife is a bird for the way that she sat there and let him go up there and slap him. And the reason why I say let him go up there and slap him, even though he is a grown ass man and he can make his own decisions. When you have somebody next to you and Dave, I hope that you can weigh in on this because you know, you're married, but when you have somebody next to you, you need somebody that's a help me, right. That is going to be there in times where you make, the crazy decisions that can pull you back and say, nah, not right here. Yeah. Nah, not in this moment. Nah, what are you doing? Like she did none of that. And, and he looked so much like a clown. And this is my biggest thing. Not because he 
protected his wife because he didn't. This was all about ego. It was not the protection of his wife. But this is the main reason for me that he looked like a clown. You as a black man got up there and smacked another black man while said black man was presenting the best documentary award to another black man, Questlove, mm -hmm. and you being nominated and ultimately winning the best Oscar award for honoring and playing a what? Black man. So all the way around, you made your black ass look like a dumb ass. And your wife looked stupid with you sitting there. And you know who did not look stupid in this? Chris Rock. Because mm -hmm. he could have reacted in a totally different way, but he did not. He, I don't know why he didn't. Because I'm like, what? Get up there and you smack me. He said, I'm acting a fool. Yeah. However, bravo to Chris Rock that he did not. And I, I have a lot more to say about this, but I will let you guys chime in with your <laughs> So I don't, I don't disagree with anything you said. Um, I think he was just. And I say he, I mean, Will Smith is just um, dealing with some other issues and it's, it's played out in public. Like he has a problem, like his book came out recently mm -hmm. and he disclosed some things about how he feels. Like he said that he's felt like a coward for most of his life. Um, he watched his father beat on his mom and never did anything maybe because he couldn't because this was like at nine years old but you already see like he's chasing a persona of a dead man you know he's always being compared to tupac because mm -hmm. that's who jada had her affiliation with mm -hmm. he's been drugged through the mud for the about the last year or so about this whole entanglement situation and then he's just constantly being clowned and that was just misguided anger he should have had restraint. He should not have gone up there. Um, I don't even think he should have yelled at him, but I would have been cool with that first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, say that. And then I don't think he should go up there at all. But I can kind of understand if they get into like a little verbal back and forth after he asked him to like, you know, keep his wife's name out of his mouth. He went up there and did something. But that didn't even happen. Like he kind of he did that was out of order. Like he slapped him and then told him, like you tell him first. You right. have, you, again, you have to have some restraint. And to your point, it was that was a black Oscars. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To his, to your point, he was presenting award an award that another black man ultimately won. He himself is black. Um, I didn't watch the awards, but I think two out of the three hosts were black. Yep. The production team, Will Packer, is black. Yes, the first ever black man to produce an Oscar, especially someone like Will Packer, and not to mm -hmm. discredit anything that he's done. However, he is looked at or has been looked at as an urban exactly. producer and putting out urban content. And for him to yeah. be on the main stage, uh, which is the biggest night in 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 the uh, movie industry, you know, in Hollywood. And for him mm -hmm. to produce it along with a black woman that was by his side um, as the production team and for him to get up there and act like that, it was just like, it was so ridiculous to me. When I tell you I was furious, I yeah. was furious as if my brother had went up there and act the fool. And let me just say this before I let you continue. In no mm -hmm. way, shape, nor form do I feel like, oh, he shouldn't have got up there and acted a fool in front of white people. This is not about white people. I want to put that out there because I know, mm -hmm. you know, that narrative is being carried around and people may take uh, what is being said and say, oh, you don't want him to act like a, like, you know, this in front of white people. No, it's not about him acting like this in front of white people. Because he could have been a black barbecue, he could have been at a black church, he could have been a, a, a BET show in front of all of us. The way that he acted and the way that he took out his questions on it, it was about ego. It was it was literally about him having a bruised ego. Why is yeah. something that you're in? You do not have to say anything. You don't owe anybody anything. Nobody has to know no. the inner workings of your marriage. Take a page out of Jay-Z and Beyonce's book. 
You see all that stuff? You you think them people ain't got nothing going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you seen him getting beat up by Shalange in that elevator? Did you ever see him talk about it afterwards? Never. No. No. Mm-hmm. Because it's no it's nobody's business what you go through in your private life. But when you put your private life out for public consumption, then you have to know what is going to come back from it. And you can't get frustrated because the public now has an opinion about what you're going through. And then you'll try to say that it's all because she got alopecia. First of all, oh, you were just on a video four days ago talking about you didn't care who has something to say about you having alopecia. Now, all of a sudden, you feel some type of way that you got to protect your wife. And this is the last thing I'll say, and then I'll let y'all finish. But I'm sorry. <laughs> you, the time that it took for him to walk up on that stage, to smack him, to walk back, to sit down, he could have walked right backstage and said whatever it is that he needed to say. As you said, Dave, he could have said it first before he did the action. But even yeah. if you wanted to smack him, you couldn't wait 10 seconds and smack him backstage? It's ridiculous. Yeah. The whole thing is ridiculous. Go ahead. I'm well, sorry. basically, what you just said was spot on. It was just that his ego was bruised right? because of what he's going through internally. That's that's really all it is. Bruised ego. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a lot of people in hospitals, jails, and graveyards over bruised egos. Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now that's, a, now that's a statement. <laughs> that's, that's a statement. That, that, that's, that's something. <laughs> that's a statement. And that's uh, that's very true. I um, have some thoughts. And um, I am not one to speculate of w- what people were going through and all this kind of stuff. Because I don't know. And I really don't care. But... One thing I will say is that, like, flat out, quick, you know, you're trying to sell books. You know what I mean? You're you're trying to sell books. Because whoever hasn't read your, you know, you're making yourself relevant and, you know, you're trying to sell books. And I think that's may have a lot to do with it. I don't know. I don't know what he was thinking. And I really don't care. But I will say. But he don't even have to sell a book. Like, (laughs) he needs to sell a book more. It's not. You are Will Smith. Be loved. And you're beloved by the others. You you are beloved. You you know Mm -hmm. why you so beloved? Because you went up there and you smacked another beloved figure. Not by black. Not beloved by black people. Beloved mm-hmm. all the way around. Chris Rock is a crossover comedian. And you went up there, you smacked him, and then you sat back down comfortable. Mm-hmm. Very comfortable. Nobody said anything. So that tells you all you need to know. You don't need to do anything. Clearly, yeah. you are beloved. For sure. I I I yeah. agree. Like people um look at him as you know, people still see Fresh Prince family, you know, good guy, his positivity on his social media and, and things like that. You know, they see all that. And, you know, I just think it may have been a stunt to sell books. But I will say this, because a lot of people aren't speaking from this perspective. I do agree with what both of you said wholeheartedly. Uh, But the First Amendment gives us the right to free speech. And I personally do not believe comics should be censored. Now, do they speak about sensitive topics and stuff like that? Yes, they do. And if it's not funny to you, don't be a fan of that comic. You know, but it's not bullying. They're making jokes. That's what they do. And to some people, it's funny. And if it's not funny to you, like I said, you know, you don't have to be a fan of of that comic. And what Chris Rock was doing was his job. Um, You know, they invite him back every year because he's good at his job and people like him at his job. And like you said, Maya, he is a crossover comedian. Now, is everybody a fan of Chris Rock? Maybe not. But so what? You know, so for people saying, oh, he shouldn't have said that, that's sensitive issue. It's a whole lot of sensitive stuff. My name is Babi. I had to go through school with a name like Babi. I've been called everything. You know, I couldn't just go around punching everybody in the face, you know, who called me out of my name 50 million times and all this other kind of stuff. Like, that's just ridiculous to blame Chris Rock for that. That's one thing. Another thing, and Maya, you say it all the time. Know your man. Right. You don't know your man. You can't say and do everything around your man or say anything to your man because you know how your man reacts. And if if um, men have to protect women, yes, but women, we also have to protect our black men. Right. Okay, yeah. babe. 
sit down. We talk about this, like you know what I mean. Like yeah, that was that was the other point I was I was going to bring up too. Just yeah. like um, for her for him to say that he was protecting her. I don't know if y'all saw the the video from the alternate view, the the yeah, alternate angle. Mm-hmm. Like if y'all like just watch the body language of everything, like it was just crazy when she when he you know went up there and slapped Chris Rock. She laughed. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then when he was on his way back, she didn't go make sure he was okay, do anything to like no. try to calm him down, none of that. No. She, in fact, if you really look, she didn't even make eye contact with him. She did it not. It was almost like they weren't sitting together. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They were sitting very far apart. And, and, and exactly. And, and even all of her statements post incident has been about her. Nothing about her husband. Everything yeah. is, has been about her. Yeah, all, she said all this of her is statements. a season of healing. No, what it is a season of is two egos that are too big to fit into the home together. And another thing is, is this. If you pay attention to Jada Pinkett over the years, when now that she is in her, I don't know, whatever it is that she calls it, this awakening that she has, um, mm-hmm. because she has stated on many of occasions that Will Smith was running the marriage, right? So she mm-hmm. was doing a lot of things in the marriage that she did not want to do. It wasn't her. It was you know, like just like when she talked about him planning that whole birthday party for her, and she didn't even want that. And, and but that he did it, true. he yeah. did it because that's what he wanted, right? So mm-hmm. it was like, This is about me, it, you know, my ego was so big. He spoke about this, he talked about that in his book as well, and he talked about it at that goofy ass red table that they got. And, um, <laughs> because that table is goofy, and 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 so to me. You know, when I look at that alternate angle and 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 what you're speaking of, Dave, to mm-hmm. me, it's a lot of um needing to prove in that relationship. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I and I think that a lot of women go through that. Um, you like I was telling my girlfriends, I said Jada Pickett is a bird, and I'm gonna tell you why. Mm-hmm. A bird is prove to me that you love me. You know. Go out there and, you know, smack him up and do this and show me that you about me and that you protecting me and this, that and the third. That's what a bird does. You know, that ain't what a woman who is about her man does. That's what a bird does. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that was bird behavior. And that's the reason why she ain't look at him. And that was the reason why she ain't because that and that's the reason why she laughed when he did that, because that was a. Oh, I've been I've been proven to you now it's my turn prove to me that you you about me and that you want me and that you chasing me that's that's what that was about there's a, there's yeah. a lot of ego going on in that whole um family mm-hmm. i don't even about. have anything else to say about that i mean that's exactly what it is yeah that's what it is i, I, I know uh, um a lot of women uh like jada pinkett and as i was scrolling through social media and i was seeing that like yeah, I want my husband to protect me like that too. So you want your husband to be uh away from the family because that's what that could have brought. You want your fam you want your husband to prove so much to you that he is about you and protecting you that you are willing to risk him not being even a part of your family. Cause let me tell you something, you know, babe. You know, I wave the flag for stick up for your people. And if you with somebody, ride for them. But a right is right and wrong is wrong. Yes. And that's just what it is. And I'll finish off by saying this because this could go on and on and on because I got a lot to say about it. But yeah. a bird yeah. and a plant <laughs> have no business being together. They nah. don't mix. And, and that's all I'll say about that. Yeah. So, and I just think that Chris Rock showed a lot of res- restraint. I mean, we grew up and, you know, you can't get along, get a fair one going, but there is no way. Now, I get angry and, and you know, I don't bother nobody. But if somebody hits me, if somebody hits, there's no way in the world he would have made it back to his chair. It's just, it's no way. I, I just, I'd have been like Jimmy Superfly Snooker on that mug. Like, are you, are you crazy? Let's see. <laughs> just gonna, it, it's first of all, a slap is disrespectful, Right. And then yeah. it's not like you're getting punched in the face. You're getting slapped. So that's a sign of disrespect. And then secondly, you turned your back on the man. Like you're not even significant. You know, like I can do. And that's why I think it was like a Hollywood show. Because who does that? I'm two, done. Two, peop- two people with self-esteem issues. You know, I, I had a little bit of um insight to Chris Rock. Just seeing like some of the interviews he had given about himself personally. 
Ooh. And he said that he has a very big ego, but horribly low self-esteem. He said he's good at what he does, but that's the only thing in the world he feels like he's good at. And he himself is somebody who's used to getting beat on. Like he grew up black and went to a predominantly white school to show a lot of racism. And he got used to get beat up a lot. Mm -hmm. So he's not the confrontational type. He's not going to be standing up fighting nobody. So for Will Smith to try to flex and do what he did, he actually did do it with the right person to get that type of result. Because if he did did that to like 90 percent of it, it would have ended a lot differently. Yeah. And I hope Chris Rock sues him. I, I really do. I, 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 he said I, he's not. I, he said he's I know not. he's not. I, I know well, that he's not. But I, I yeah. wish that he did. And the reason mm-hmm. being is because a point needs to be proven. Just like he thought that he was proving a point by going up there and smacking him. Like, it's not about the violence of it. It's not about that. Because people get smacked all the time. For real, for real, some people need to get smacked. But that wasn't a a you-need-to-get-smacked type of situation. And then the fact that people ran to Will Smith's side. And this is is another thing I'll say. And this is going to be the last thing, for real. This is really going to be the last thing. I want us to get out of that um, you-are-protecting-black-women thought process for this situation. This is not yeah. protecting black women. It is so many ways that you can protect black women. And I, and I think that, you know, that's a whole nother topic within itself that we can um, dive into later, but it's a whole lot of ways that you could protect black women, you know, mm-hmm. and it's a lot of people out there that ain't protecting black women. And, and, and now that this man then smack somebody and said, keep my wife's name out your mouth. Then you want to confuse the two that this is protecting black women. This ain't, this is not protecting black women. Not this, is, this is, this is nowhere near when, when, when people are punching down on us all the time as black women, I, I don't see a lot of people standing up waving no flag. And I don't see a lot of people smacking people on our behalf either. You know, like we never talked about the, and I'm not going to talk about it now, but we never talked about the Meg, the Stallion and the Tory Lane situation. People mm-hmm. can't wait to say how much of a liar she is for getting shot in her foot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they can't wait to t- tell this girl that she ain't, nothing you know like you ain't Mm -hmm. shit you're lying you you know you're trying to take this black man down when you stand up for situations like that that's protecting black women you know when chris rock makes a a joke that is definitely not of malice intent and you get up there and you smack him because your ego is uh bruised that ain't protecting black women okay no he could have um will smith like you said when the when the when the cameras was off he could have went backstage and talked to him and it could have been a teachable moment and he could have protection. Like if you want to go that far, it's like, look, now you embarrassed her publicly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need you to apologize publicly. Yes. And then we're square. Mm-hmm. Don't do that anymore. That could it could have been that. I mean, everybody involved is in their fifties. Chris Rock is almost sixty. You know what I'm saying? Like you you wait till you're in your fifties to start smacking people. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you're not known for smacking. You're not even known for cursing. Right. For real. For real. <laughs> so. And now you're cursing on one of the biggest stages. I, I yeah. just, I just, and not I, little I, curse words, like the big curse words. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. saying it. Because there yeah. are levels, Dave. That's true. There's levels. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, I just, I just, I mean, you know, again, this topic can go on and on and on. I think that um, it, it just was an unfortunate situation. Um, I'll be, um, I'm high pressed to see how it's going to um, continue to play out. But you know, let's let's keep all. Well, no, I, I'm 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 about to lie and say let's keep everybody in our thoughts. But I'm lying because I don't want to keep Will Smith or Jada in my thoughts. But let's keep Chris Rock in our thoughts. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's let's do that. But you know what? Again, we could talk about this over and over, on and on. It's, it's so much I could say. But let's let's get into why we are really here today and why we have Dave on um, the show today. Again, Dave, thank you so much for coming back and and being our guest. Um, we really appreciate you taking your time out to come back. As I stated in the beginning of the show, April is Autism Awareness Month. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did our first autism awareness show with Dave. Uh, and we just thought that it was important after a couple of years of us being on hiatus to, to bring Dave back and 
today we want to talk more about autism. I, I think mm-hmm. that autism is a um, very important topic. I think that um, I'm so happy that I have both of you or that we have both of you here to talk about it because um, both of you live within the wonderful, what do you say, Bib? The wonder-filled, the wonder-filled world. world of autism. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, on this show, we wanted to just give an update, like we said, on Dave's wonderful son, DJ. We also are going to hear uh, a little bit about our fave, or you know he's my fave, Jiggy. And um, with fave. Son. <laughs> um, and uh yeah, so 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 because it's autism awareness month, let's let's get into it. For the people who didn't hear our first show, let's start with the basics of, of it all. What is autism? Well, autism is a um it's labeled as a neurological disorder. And what happens is during the development period, usually children are born normal pregnancy, normal birth, normal development up until about 16 months. And then sometimes the children start to either regress or they just don't progress um, with their development. So um, they call it a developmental disorder because even though you could be diagnosed at any age, onset of the symptoms usually happen within the first two years of life. So I think the correct term is autism spectrum disorder. Mm -hmm. And um, it is a spectrum disorder because the spectrum is, is why you can have uh, very mild symptoms to very severe symptoms, but autism deals mostly with the way a, a person communicates and how they process learning and and behave socially. So that that's what autism is in a in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I started I started noticing some regressions just from my personal um, experience with my son. Exactly at eighteen months. Mm-hmm. It was a, exactly at eighteen months. He had um, an eighteen month checkup, and one of the questions were when you fill out the questionnaires, like, you know, can your child, can you give him direction, he, he or she direction and point to something? And I asked my wife, you know, does he do that? And she's like, I don't know. So I, I, I called him and I'm like, what's that? And I pointed. And then he looked and he pointed. So I'm like, yeah, he does it. So it was fine. We went and had his appointment. But probably like maybe a week or two later, I just started noticing a a rapid regression like a decline of like some skills that he was coming into that he just wasn't doing anymore um the one thing that i remember is we were teaching him his body parts and um i think this might have been even been the same day that he had the uh, doctor's appointment at at 18 months Uh, my wife had given him a bath and then she brought him downstairs because i was still downstairs Um, and she was like, look, I wanted to show you something. So she told him to like point to his nose and he like pressed really hard on his nose. So like proud of him. He's reached his milestone. Right. And, um, he just, a couple days later, we asked him to do it and he was just looking at us like we were crazy. And it was just little things. Like if we were sitting down at the table and we would say our grace, we were able to get him to say amen. Mm -hmm. And one day he just stopped and he just wasn't saying anything. Mm. So it was you know that that was probably like the first things it was it was other things you know later on that just seemed to be odd mm-hmm. and just not typical for a child to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope we're not rambling because I you no, know I no 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 no. But um, yeah, that was that was probably some things that I noticed in the very beginning, and I actually was looking for it. Um, because I have a hypersensitive hy- hypersensitivity to this subject because I I know a lot of parents who deal with this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So this was something that I was always kind of like a bit fearful of. Mm-hmm. Just because I again I I know I can probably think of five people that I know that are dealing with at least one child with autism. I know two 
that are dealing, they have two, two of their children oh, wow. have, have autism. And it is a spectrum because, you know, severely impacted, not so severely impacted. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't know where my son fell into that. And really, to be honest, I still don't. He appears to be doing, you know, very well. But I, I don't know. I don't. He's starting to he's starting to say things more and he's trying to express himself. And I'm trying to understand his expression. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, when he's frustrated, he, he, he may say things like, Dad, you know, this is so hard for me. Oh, okay. It's like when he, and I don't know what he's feeling like on the inside, but we had recently gone um, to dinner and there was a wait and we were waiting in the car. They were going to text us when, um, when our table was ready. Mm-hmm. And I didn't think he was going to sit in the car for as long as he did because we weren't <laughs> doing anything. He, he did pretty good. He, you know, for the first 30 minutes, <laughs> cool, but then he, he yeah. I guess he got tired of playing Tetris on his phone and watching right. family food or whatever. Right. And he started getting a little bit uneasy. And you know, he told us, uh, you know, waiting is just so hard for me. It is. So he said know, that? Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. We, yeah. Well he's he he say, I don't know he, that, but he's he's high. Yeah. He's doing yeah. that. Because for him yeah. to even acknowledge that and know yeah. that, you know, like it, you have babies that's not on the spectrum that ain't going to say nothing like that. So, yeah, he's doing yeah, that. That's true. Wonderful. That's true. Yeah. He's so his, his his way of communicating and things that he says are a little different. And, I, you know, I'm just trying to learn that. So. Wow, Dave, you uh I it's it's funny that you mentioned that because you know Jiggy is older than me now. And so <laughs> I, I'm just 25 with experience myself. <laughs> so, and um so I do remember mm-hmm. um thinking yeah, something's not quite right. You know, mm-hmm. I don't remember um, something like super specific, but I do remember one day we lived on in an apartment and on a second floor. And I remember him walking up the steps and he was meeting his feet. Like mm-hmm. he would step, meet his foot, step, meet his foot. And I was like, I think he's supposed to be like holding on and alternating by now. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. kids are supposed to be alternating like two. Yeah. And um, I didn't take him to the doctor. I took him to the school. I called the school when he was two. Mm -hmm. I said, look, I don't he's not sick. He's not sick. But I I don't I think maybe he might be deaf or something because you're right. Like you can. My son doesn't communicate the way DJ does. I mean, if he would have, I mean, that would have been great. But um, Mm -hmm. my son and you said, you know, look at you like you're crazy. But that's what they do. And a lot of uh people not just children with autism they have a flat affect so like when they're happy when they're mm-hmm. sad when they're angry you know it's just all the same expression and so ex- my son didn't talk until he was three his very first words were i want cereal mm-hmm. no Can't mama dad that dad, goo goo guy got nothing nothing yeah, it's, it's, talk, but that's it's funny how that happens like it, it took us a, a long time to potty train him and then one day he just went <laughs> like he just woke up one day and guess decided he was and to this day he's never had an accident mm-hmm. like i just thought that was like crazy like all right well i guess it was worth the wait because <laughs> <laughs> yes he, clearly it was but i wanted yeah. to go back to something that you had said um mm-hmm. You said that when you took him to the doctors at 18 months, he got the checkup, and but you had noticed some things prior to. Now, no, it was like right after. Okay, because I was going to say was right you after. Took him to the doctor, um, because we could talk a little bit about that. Like both of you, when you took him to the doctor at 18 months, did the doctor diagnose him? Like, how are the children? Uh, no, nah, he was um with autism. He appeared to be typical at that point. Okay, you know, eighteen months is young, so you don't really have a whole lot to go off of. But yeah. it was just some things that he was doing right after that. Um, all right, so what he used to do, I go back to that. But what, what he used to do is he used to see it like a door, and he would just open it and shut it, open, shut it, open, mm-hmm. shut it. Then he had this like one toy that was that 
it was something almost like a Rubik's cube, but it was like vertical, and he mm-hmm. would just open, close it, open, close it. Like anything that was shut, he would take a drawer, open it, shut it, open it, shut it. And it was like we had to like try to redirect him and, and break him out of that. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought that was a little weird. But now he's still like if he sees a door cracked, he'll go over and close it. Mm-hmm. Like he he can't see a, like a cracked door without closing it. Mm-hmm. Um, his yeah. appetite is like his palate is. I'm like, you're not tired of these chicken nuggets yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, because Big Jiggy does the same thing, doesn't he? Like, when I come to her house, I don't care. Yeah. I've been aimed in there five years. When I come back, he is <laughs> the same. His mm-hmm. rice. Yeah. And, and you know, he eats the same things. It's like, I know if we had pizza, Jiggy's mm-hmm. going to be about it. If we had yeah. lasagna, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like, maybe yes. we need to get him a pie. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And be encouraged, Dave, because that was that was one of the things that worried me, the restrictive diet, because he used to eat everything, like all whatever I've cooked, he used to eat that. But then it was like, Jiggy was literally like five foods for years. But um, the, he used to see a developmental pediatrician And she assured me that he Mm -hmm. would be fine. She said she had uh, one, it was a female. She had one patient, it was a female. She only ate, literally, she only ate potato chips and pizza. That was it. He he would eat that too. He's always asking for pizza and potato chips. That's funny. (laughs) uh, Yes. Chicken nuggets. That's So for a long time, Jiggy, chicken nuggets, and fries, um, and in mm-hmm. certain places he won't eat their nuggets. So his pa- their palate is very sensitive. He used to eat peanut butter and jelly, but somebody made him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and used chunky peanut butter, and he has never eaten he's one since. since. <laughs> he, was <sick. laughs> mm-hmm. he was sick, and he's never eaten it since. But there was something that you touched on, like the repetitiveness. Like they, a lot of times, uh, people with autism, they have you know, things that they focus on, they just can't help it. And um, they you, they have a lot of repetitive behaviors like DJ with the opening and closing. And um, Jiggy used to, uh, had, he had echolalia, which means that he would repeat something like over and over and over. So if there, if there was something that he heard and it would click, he would say it literally like all day, that one thing. And then there were some things like the waiting was very difficult you know, waiting in line, like anything. I just, you know, you, it's a lot of preparation you have to do because, you know, like, how am I going to, you know, how is he going to function? But, um, you know, be encouraged because it, you know, as long I feel like early intervention is a lifesaver. Mm-hmm. Was DJ an early intervention? For sure. Yeah. And, and I really feel like that was a lifesaver that really helped a lot. And um, you just keep working up to their abilities. Now, does DJ know he's autistic? No, no. not not verbally. I don't I don't know if he feels any um, difference between the children he interacts with at school. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if he can feel that yet. And that's, that's mm-hmm. actually um, a very good question, because my wife actually asked. We had a conversation and it was like, you know when and what do we tell him and i'm like i i don't know exactly right cuz I, I don't know <laughs> right I, don't know. I i felt like well i mean i can't i can't tell you what to say cuz my I son know, was, i got to say i don't know jig no and he he didn't at 30 i don't, I, know. I, I don't know if he knows they, my son excuse me my son does not ascribe to the school of he has autism. He, I felt like if I taught him, I didn't know what to say or how to say it, but I just started, you know, talking about autism and I, you know, it was a commercial that came on the TV and I was like, Oh, maybe we can talk about it. He'll understand. And maybe he'll I self identify and say, Oh, you know what? Sometimes I struggle with that, you know, or sometimes I see things that way, but I said, jig, do you know anybody with autism? He was like, no, who? <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So maybe like two weeks later, um, and my son Jiggy went to school with um he went to a special a school for children with special needs because okay. um we lived in Camden. It was just it was sensory overload, too many children, too many things going on at the same time, whatever. So I was like, no, just send him here, he'll you know, he'll be okay. Um mm-hmm. and so two weeks later he says 
Hey, mom, remember you asked me if if I knew anybody if, with autism? I said, yeah. He said, I said, you know somebody? He said, you know that kid Johnny on my basketball? <laughs> <laughs> He said they're nice people. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but he does not. He does not ascribe to that school. So, um, what grade is DJ in now? First. First grade. So, so he he went to a school. It was it was mixed, but it was mostly children with autism in the school. Okay. Okay. And you know they they get the children ready for first grade because they do have an accredited kindergarten class Mm -hmm. but it's transitional kindergarten so they said 50 i found this out after he graduated but they said 50 percent of people of the children end up going to kindergarten having having to repeat kindergarten and the Mm -hmm. other half go to first grade so he was in between that uh in the COVID year where it was remote anyway Mm -hmm. so the, the reason why I hesitated when you asked is because it's sort of kind of hybrid. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. sort of first, but sort of kindergarten also. Okay. Like, yeah, he definitely has an IEP. And I guess we'll, we'll have him evaluated, you know, with the school towards the end of the, in fact, I think we have a meeting um, next week. Okay. To talk to, to talk to the school about his IEP and like, you know, what's going to happen next year. He actually, uh, he enjoys school more than I thought he would. Oh, okay. Good. Like we, we, we struggled with putting him on the school bus. We thought that he, he was going to struggle with it, and he didn't. Like, oh, you know, for us to say we're going to take him to school is like almost punishment. Like, he doesn't want us to take him to school. He wants to get on the school bus. Right. That's right. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's so. good. Yeah. I'm sure that he'll continue to surprise you guys. And, yeah. and, and, and because I'm sure that he does that all the time. I mean, you, you know, when you think about it, you like, look how far he come. When I think about Jig, I'm like, yeah, look how far did you come? Sometimes I forget his ass is autistic. <laughs> I, I, I tell you that. So, so, <laughs> so you have that to look forward to. Um, you, do. <laughs> you do. So let's talk a little bit now that we're talking about school. Let's talk about, um, Dave, you haven't gotten here yet, but you know, it's mm-hmm. something that will happen when the children age out of school. Can you speak to that bit? Because like, at you know, kids, they eventually become adults. Right. And so they age out of school. What has been your um, experience with that? And then, Dave, as far as you're concerned, are you guys even thinking ahead um, as far as that's concerned? I, I am. Mm-hmm. I was I was fearful. Um, like I said, it right around the 18 month mark. Even without the diagnosis, I I knew like I I knew enough people who who were dealing with similar issues. I would have been more surprised if I'd went and they didn't give him a diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, it was it was still devastating for a lack of a better word when he actually did get the diagnosis. Yeah. And I I didn't think about his childhood right away. I thought about him as an adult. If if you want me to be one thousand percent honest. Yeah. I thought about him being an adult and me not being here anymore. Mm-hmm. And what does his life look like at that point? Mm-hmm. Um it's a it's a scary it's thought. It, it is. It's um it might not be Take your time. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more um optimistic now mm-hmm. because he's he you know and he's only 7. But he's um he showed me a lot. He's progressed a lot, and I'm hoping that he continues on that path. But it's it's still a fear of mine. The conversation continues next week. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here for this week. We hope that you enjoyed part one of the Autism Awareness episode. Remember, a new episode drops each and every Monday. Be sure to check us out anywhere where you can listen to your favorite podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.
You can find us on all social media sites. We're at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at We Did That Shit. Remember, be great this week. Do that shit.